Mr. Pauletta, you may now begin. Chairman Johnson, Ranking Member Issa, and members of the subcommittee, thank you for this invitation to testify at this hearing titled Building Confidence in the Supreme Court Through Ethics and Recusal Reforms. Unfortunately, the title does not reflect what this hearing is about. If confidence in the court is lacking, it is not due to issues of ethics or recusals. Rather, the confidence in the court is undermined by the coordinated campaign by the corporate media and Democrats to smear conservative justices with the goal of delegitimizing the court. Why now? Because liberals fear that the court finally has a working conservative majority that may sweep away a number of longtime liberal landmark cases that cannot stand up to more rigorous constitutional scrutiny. And in this effort, Democrats and the media are trying to threaten, intimidate, destroy, and remove any of the justices who may constitute this new majority. If you think this is hyperbole, perhaps a brief reminder is in order. Democrat Senator Chuck Schumer stood on the steps of the Supreme Court in March 2020, directly threatening Justices Kavanaugh and Gorsuch as the court heard oral argument on an abortion case. He said, I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. Less than a year earlier, Democrat Senator Sheldon Winehouse, the lead Senate sponsor of this proposed legislation, filed an amicus brief in the Second Amendment case pending before the Supreme Court, where he threatened the court that the court better drop the case or face the consequences. He wrote, the Supreme Court is not well, and the people know it. Perhaps the court can heal itself before the public demands it can be restructured in order to reduce the influence of politics. And now, we are now in the middle of the latest attack in the 40-year war on Justice Clarence Thomas, this time an all-out assault on the justice and his wife, Ginny, for so-called ethical transgressions, such as Justice Thomas allegedly failing to recuse because of his wife's activities. It is a false and malicious attack on two good people. The left hates Justice Thomas because he is a black conservative who has never bowed to those who demand that he must think a certain way because of the color of his skin. Their racist attacks have repeatedly sought to portray Justice Thomas as dependent on white people. From Judge Larry Silverman on the D.C. Circuit to Justice Scalia Mr. on the Chair, Supreme Chair, this Court. is completely out of order. I don't hate Justice Thomas. Nothing about his race. Let I don't the know witness why he's finish his testimony. This is not inappropriate at all. This is regular order. The witness shall proceed. And always his wife. It's despicable. Justice Thomas triggers the left, exposing their racism. But 30 years later, Justice Thomas is still standing strong, considered by many to be our greatest justice. But it appears that the left also really hates Ginny Thomas because she is an outspoken, unapologetic conservative woman. Justice Thomas has acted ethically and honorably at all times. To date, he has had no reason to recuse himself from any case because of his wife's opinions or activities. The new recusal standards being applied to Justice Thomas have no grounding in the law or in precedent. Judge Stephen Reinhart, a liberal icon from the Ninth Circuit, did not recuse from a case challenging a ban on same-sex marriages even though his wife, who was the head of an ACLU chapter, had spoken out against the ban, and her organization had even filed, joined, two amicus briefs in the court below. Judge Reinhardt wrote that his wife's, and this is quote, views are hers, not mine, and I do not in any way condition my opinions on the positions she takes regarding any issues. Judge Reinhardt concluded that, as Gabe said, a reasonable person would not, be, uh, would not believe he would be partial simply because of his wife or his, her organization's view. Judge Reinhardt also determined that his wife had no interest in the outcome of this case beyond the interest of any American with a strong view concerning the social issues that confront this nation. Sound familiar? When Judge Reinhardt voted exactly as his wife and the ACLU had advocated, nobody accused him of being a puppet of his wife. In fact, just Professor Stephen Gillers, co-panelist, filed a brief defending Judge Reinhardt, writing, a spouse's views and actions, however passionately held and discharged, are not imputed to her spouse. A contrary outcome would deem a judge's spouse unable to hold most any position of advocacy, creating what amounts to marriage penalty. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's husband, law firm, appeared several times before the Supreme Court, and Justice Ginsburg never recused herself. In fact, she voted in favor of Marty Ginsburg's colleague's client. Based on the law and precedent, Judge Reinhardt and Justice Ginsburg properly did not recuse. But these and other examples in my written testimony prove that Justice Thomas is correct in not recusing from any case to date because of, his, because of his wife's activity. More troubling, in 2016, Justice Ginsburg directly attacked candidate Donald Trump. She called him a faker, trashed him for not releasing his taxes, and opined that she feared living in America if Trump were elected. Talk about undermining the legitimacy of the court. She did not recuse from cases involving the Trump administration, including one where President Trump was challenging his subpoena to release his taxes. Of course she voted against President Trump. 
But despite Justice Ginsburg's dangerous foray into president's politics, presidential politics prevent Donald Trump from being elected, no Democrat called for hearings or talked of impeaching her for these partisan attacks or her refusal to recuse from cases involving President Trump. The, the gentleman was interrupted for his uh, yeah, comments. He needs to finish. Sure. There is nothing wrong with ethics and recusals at the Supreme Court. The justices are ethical and honorable public servants. Moreover, to support any reform legislation right now would be to validate this vicious attack on the Supreme Court. Thank you.